Hey guys, in the last video we talked about setting up logging and how you do that. In this video I want to go through a quick real example of how I use logging in my Django application. Now you'll see in my console here I have some log messages being logged and really the way that works is I'm on my blog right now. If I click on something like let's go to my site analytics page and then I go back over here we can see that it's getting the site analytics and it's fetching some JavaScript and some different plugins that are used to render the map. Now, why is this happening and how is this set up? So I have a Django parent logger here and then there are different children loggers that I've set up and this is, this is coming from the Django documentation. So if you go in the Django doc, it talks about that Django is the parent logger and then these are the different children. Um, I'm not gonna explain these in great detail, but I'm gonna leave this uh, link in the description for you to read more about them. So when you wanna show anything in the console, you would set up a stream handler and I have all the code in the example if you wanna copy exactly what I'm doing. So I have this console handler called logging stream handler as the class and within my loggers the parent logger here is referencing this console handler so it's basically saying the parent django logger log everything that the parent logger has access to to the console handler so it'll base at a level of info so it's going to go to info and then say okay i've got a whole bunch of messages i'm going to send them to the console handler and um, to get a little bit more information about um, kind of these log messages, I've set up two different formats. And for my stream handler, the console handler, I've set the formatter to be simple. So it's referencing this one. So we'll, I'll just quickly jump through these different items. We have level name, time, name, module, file name, line number, func name, message. And that's everything referring to these right here. And this is the level name is talking about, you know, is this debug, info, warning, critical, the time. And this piece here is, is really useful. This is talking about which logger was responsible for this message. And in this case, it's Django server. And you'll notice when we go in here, there's these different loggers and it says whether they propagate or not. So why don't we mess around with this and I'm going to turn this Instead of it being equal to true, I'm going to change it to false. Let's see, do, do, do. I'm still learning them. It's quite hard. So let's see, change that to false. And now my server is reloading and let's try going to a different location. So we'll go to the home page, and we're not seeing anything coming through. We'll go to life advice we don't see anything either. Now, I'm curious to see, and I haven't actually tested this, what happens if I put in something wrong, like life advices, that is not a real endpoint. And in this case, we got a few different errors. So we have all these tracebacks, and this is coming, I believe this is going to be coming from my template, um, my Django template. Let's scroll down here. So it, it reloaded, exception, debug. Okay, here we go. So this is saying we got a debug message coming from Django template. And that is my Django template handler. And it's saying, you know, there was an error. It couldn't find this category. So why don't we go in here and we'll turn off, we'll turn this to false. So now we're no longer gonna see errors from the Django template. And let's see if I can clear the terminal. Okay, so now let's try that again. We're gonna hit the wrong page. And here we got a warning coming from Django request saying that it could not find this life advices category. So in that case, it, we're coming from Django request, which still has set to propagate to true. So these two loggers are set to false, meaning do not propagate to the parent. 
So in that case, the parent isn't gonna have access to these log messages and they're not gonna be sent to the console handler. And since they're not sent to the console handler, they're not gonna show up in my console. All right, so we saw a bit of that and I'm gonna turn these back on just so we can um, have access to them. And the next thing I'm gonna talk about is whenever these, oh, and we're gonna get a lot of errors probably because it's gonna to try to hit that page again. So let's get away from that page, get it, go to something nice and we'll, and we'll get our, um, we'll be back to just getting info messages, not the craziness of hitting the wrong page. So something that's interesting about these is that we're also referencing the error handler. And then in this case, we have an info handler. And the error handler and the info handler are writing to a file. So for my info handler, I'm saying everything that's logged at the level of info or higher goes into this blog the data info log and everything that's logged at a level of warning or higher goes into the error log. And here they are, here's my info log. We can see there's all of the infos and anything higher like the warnings of the page that couldn't be found. And then in my error log, we're only seeing the warnings. So we're not seeing any of those infos. And this is pretty useful because if I ever have any issues with my server, I can check the error log and see exactly what's happening. And if I wanna dig into more information, like what kind of calls were happening before the warning or what was happening after, I can go into the info log. And just another debugging step here, if we go over to settings.py, you're free to change these levels as much as you'd like. So if we went in here and we changed all these to debug, I mean, we're gonna get a lot of messages if we do this, but let's go for it. So those are set to info, those are set to info, and we'll set to debug. So now we're getting all the messages in here, and you'll see there's just crazy amount of messages being writ written to the console. Um, so anytime I'm navigating my app, there's gonna be tons and tons of messages. And you really would only turn on debug if you really had a gnarly error that you wanted to figure out because the logs are pretty hard to read in the debug format because there's so many coming in um, and it's just crazy amount of information. But what's interesting is that I will check to make sure this is true, but I don't think that these logs are going to be written like the warning and they're not gonna be written because at the handler level, I've sort of filtered out the log saying, hey, even if you give me debug logs, I'm only gonna log things that are set at the level of info. And the same thing for the error handler, it's saying, hey, no matter what you give me, I'm only logging warning or higher. So when we check our error logs, we're seeing we're not getting any debug information here and we're not getting any debug information on this one either. The only place we're getting debug logs are in our stream handler, the console handler. And that's because the console handler is set at a level of debug. But again, if I go come in here and I set this to info and I save and restart, even though I've set all these logs to debug, I'm only getting the info messages coming through. Um, so that's, I, I guess the most mind bending part of this is you can set the levels at two different places. So I think of the lowest level in the stack is the logger level. And this is just saying like, what can get logged? And then the handlers are saying, okay, even though these logs are coming at me, which ones do I wanna pay attention to? So let's turn these back to info. So our console doesn't get overrun and we'll go to info and then we'll save that and I'll set this back to debug. And you might be wondering like, why, why would I set the console handler to debug if all of my loggers are set to info? And really that's because my template logger is set to debug because of that documentation weirdness of you need it set to debug to get the missing context variable messages. Okay, so that's kind of some of the in the weeds 
stuff about changing the different logging settings. Now, the last bit I wanna talk about is actually how would you log errors yourself? So if I have in my site analytics app, I have a util that logs different IP addresses coming through and, and this is what's generating the site analytics map. So basically as IP addresses come in, I'm counting unique ones and displaying them on the map. And the way you access a given logger is you would just make a variable and I've called it logger. And then you, you know, import logging, you say logging.getLogger and then you reference the name of the logger that you want to leverage. And in my case, I'm using just the parent logger. So that's Django. So I've got this parent logger and then if I wanna make any, do any messages, then I simply just do logger.info and I'm saying information like, I'm about to add this IP address. Or in this case, I think I have a warning in here. Yeah, I added a logger.warning saying I had trouble parsing this IP address. And that's basically all you have to do. So if you ever want to add anything to these loggers, you just go up to the top of your file and you grab the logger and then you just, you know, go along your way. So if I wanted to log a critical, I could do logger.critical. And then now this is now a critical message that'll be sent in a critical way. And let's actually try that as an example. So I'm gonna grab this logger and this is totally, I haven't demoed this before. So we're just gonna see how it goes. And let's go to my blog views and let's take a look at like the home view. So this is going to fire anytime I go to the home page. And let's grab the logger is, and we have to make sure we import logging. Perfect. And then now we wanna do logger.critical and say something like a really bad error happened. And then now when I load, let's see if it comes up when I visit the home page. All right, let's go to home. And yet we're getting an error here and it's saying, this is the level, this is the time. It came from my Django views, or it came from the Django logger, parent logger. And then the module is views views.py is the file name. It's on line 25. Yep, that's the line number right there. And the way I'm reading this is according to my formatter right here. So now we're talking about the line number and then it's talking about which function was this in and that is inside the get query set method. And then it talks about, um, you know, if there's a uh, process ID, which I think isn't applicable here, and then the message, which is a really bad error happened. All right, um, that is how loggers work and how I've set up loggers in my environment, and I hope that was useful. And now you are a logging expert, or at least a logging intermediate, perhaps.